So there's, you know, your body expects this balance, you know, and this, this is true in your eyes. It's true in your brain. Um, you know, one of the most interesting things that I, when I fixed my diet and when the people I was working with started fixing their diets, but based on my experience is we all noticed that our vision got a bit sharper, right? And it typically happened pretty quickly. And I thought that was pretty interesting. I didn't really understand why until recently. But as you're taking up more omega-3 fats, the omega-3 fats are more active, okay, in your cell membranes, and they can react better to light signals. And they're transmitting those signals onto your brain more effectively, right? So it's literally having an effect you know, that kind of a fundamental effect in your body where it can affect nerve transmission, your vision, um, you know, it'll affect your immune function because when your body has a immune response, it's going to take these polyunsaturated fats that are stored in the cell membranes and convert them into various different signaling molecules. And the omega-6 signaling molecules tend to be pro-inflammatory. They're telling your body to start an inflammatory reaction. And the omega-3 fats tend to be, I won't, don't want to say anti-inflammatory, but sort of resolution of inflammation signals. So your body needs both things there, both components to do this signaling. And, you know, if you get into a modern American diet where most people are eating a tiny fraction of the omega-3 fats that their body is expecting, well, they're really good at starting inflammation, but they're not going to be able to shut it down because they don't have they don't have the building blocks that they need to make these signals to calm down the inflammation in the body. So on both sides, there's kind of a hierarchy. The fats we can get from plants. On the omega-6 side, that's linoleic acid, basically. On the omega-3 side, that's alpha linolenic acid. When those go into a higher organism, then they can be converted into what we call long chain polyunsaturated fats, which are the EPA and DHA that we hear about. And on the, on the omega three side, on the omega six side, it's primarily a fat called arachidonic acid. The long chain fatty acids we get from eating animal foods. Okay. Plant foods don't contain those. Your body can make those from plant foods to an extent with again, all sorts of caveats in there. Certain of these fats, if you're, you know, your body can't typically make enough of the omega-3 fats. So if you're on a vegan diet, you're not going to be eating any animal foods. You're not going to have a dietary source of these omega-3 fats, these long chain omega-3 fats that your body needs. So you're going to be deficient in them, right? Which can cause neurological issues, vision issues. Typically, we would be getting some small amount of the short chain fatty acids and then long chain fatty acids on both sides from our diet. But as the American diet has been changed to reduce the amount of animal fat that we're consuming, we're getting most of these fats from plant-based sources. And for instance, with DHA, your body is really, really, really bad at making DHA from plant-based sources. In some studies I've seen in humans, um, they're unable to make any at all, right? And part of the reason for that is, the primary reason for that is that when your body is trying to make uh, the longer chain fats that it actually needs from the shorter chain fats that it's getting in the diet, they're using a single pathway to do that conversion. And the omega-6 tends to block the pathway. So it takes up the pathway. So you wind up making excess amounts of the omega-6 fat, arachidonic acid, and you can't make enough of the omega-3 fats. So, you know, that gets back to what I was describing before, where you wind up with a over allotment of omega-6 fats in your membranes and an under allotment of omega-3 fats in your membranes. Arachidonic acid is essential, right? And what that means in dietary terms is required for life and your body can't make it. So there are other things like say glucose is required for life, but your body can make all the glucose it needs. You don't need to eat glucose, right? An essential component of the diet is something that's required for life that your body can't make. So arachidonic acid is essential. DHA is essential. Uh, EPA is essential. 
three fats, um, one omega-6 fat, two omega-3 fats. Arachidonic acid is a super important fat because it's used to stimulate inflammatory reactions. So if you have an infection, if you get injured, it's used in developing your brain. So if you're deficient in arachidonic acid when you're developing, you're going to have serious neurological defects, right? So it's very important thing, but you only need a tiny little amount of it. And it is very dangerous in the body. When it gets oxidized, it is extremely toxic, which is why your body is keeping it around as a signaling molecule. Because of that, your body tends not to, you know, it can, it makes more arachidonic acid when it has a need for arachidonic acid. It doesn't just automatically make it, right? I mean, this is kind of a straw man argument that people often make when they're describing omega-6 fats. And they say, oh, well, you know, if you eat, you know, too much seed oils, your arachidonic acid doesn't go sky high. Well, yes, because your body isn't dumb <laughs> for the most part. And it knows that this is a dangerous fat, but it needs it, but it only needs a little bit. So it's very carefully regulated in the body so that your body has enough of it. Now, what seems to happen is when you get an inflammate, when you get inflammation and it starts getting converted, that process is driven by how much you have in membranes. So then you can get excess inflammation because you've got, you know, your body is expecting X amount of arachidonic to be around and it's got more than it expects because you can, you know, you're saturated, your entire body is saturated with arachidonic acid because it has all the precursors that it could ever want to make arachidonic acid. And additionally, part of the way that the arachidonic acid in the body is regulated is because the body will use omega-3s first, and then it will use omega-6 second. In a natural diet, your body is going to have a lot of omega-3 in your tissues and you know less omega-6 than what we have now. But because we don't have enough omega-3, we wind up with a lot more omega-6 in our in our membranes than what we're supposed to have. These seed oils are providing us with too many omega-6 fats, linoleic acid, which is rancid and toxic, arachidonic acid, the body's better at making that as it needs it as a whole. Do we ever have to worry about dietary taking in too much arachidonic acid like we do through linoleic? It's... I suppose it's theoretically possible, but I've never heard of a case in humans. I mean, you know, it's in meat, but there's not a lot in meat. And people who eat nothing but a carnivore diet seem to be fine. So, you know, I suppose if we went and did the same thing that we've done with seed oils, which is where we've, you know, so say you went to beef and refined out the arachidonic acid and gave yourself an enormous amount of that. Would that be a problem? Yeah, it could be a problem, but nobody actually does that. 